Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Walter Elias Disney, born in 1901 at the turn of the 20th century, founder of the Walt Disney Corporation as we know it today. Innovator, leader, dreamer, or was he? Some knew him as caring and kind. Some knew him as a strong businessman. Some saw him as a daring chance taker. Building a massive media empire worth more than $150 billion as of today's video date, we're going to take a closer look at the 1941 animator strike that almost cost the company everything. Disclaimer, this mini documentary is independently produced and has no affiliation with the Walt Disney Corporation, PBS, or any other affiliates. This has been composed of a mix of original material and archival footage that is property of the Walt Disney Corporation and PBS. No copyright infringement intended, as according to the fair use policy. This film is not affiliated nor endorsed by the Walt Disney Corporation. As always, I was not paid or sponsored to produce this video. As for the historical aspect of this video, if you like this video, give it a nice like and thumbs up. It helps promote this video for many more people throughout the world just like you. And take it one step further, if you're new to my channel, welcome, consider subscribing. Thanks. Just shy of four months, the Walt Disney Animator Strike of 1941 lasted from May 29th to September 21st, 1941. Employees at the Walt Disney Studios had been begging for better wages, extra pay for overtime, and a uniform system for determining job titles and screen credits for months. Walt had waved this off as the hobby horse of a few hotheads and union agitators, right up to May 29, 1941, the day nearly half of his art department walked out to take up positions on the picket line. The strike demonstrations got bigger in the first weeks, and louder, and so did the threat to the already shaky studio. Disney's last two feature films, Pinocchio and Fantasia, had both lost money, and investors were fleeing. So at this point, Walt was getting desperate. He was getting worried. He was planning on putting all his eggs in one basket and hoping Dumbo, or Bambi, would pull the company through. So well into the height of the strike, Walt went on vacation to South America on August 17, 1941. Screw you guys! I'm going home! And if you ask me, this is where Walt loses it just a little bit. He begins to eat cold chili out of a can, he goes to South America, his father passes away and doesn't even bother coming back for his father's funeral. So he decides to say, yeah, I'm going to start my own theme park. I'm going to control every aspect of this little world that I'm going to create. Everyone knows the story how he was sitting with his daughters on a park bench and got the idea for Disneyland. But if you think back from a historical standpoint, this was the turning point that gave him the idea. There was one day where Art Babbitt noticed Disney driving to the gate. And Babbitt just kind of blew a stack and just jumped over and grabbed a bullhorn and shouted out loud so everybody could hear, there he goes, the great man, and basically just heaped abuse on Disney. Shame on you, Walt Disney. This set Walt on fire. It infuriated him. He jumped out of the car and started to brawl. He started to fight him. It took the police to break him up. At this point, he didn't really know what to do. He didn't realize or understand why all his workers were against him. He was at wit's end. He didn't understand why everyone was against him. But those who were against him were on a list.
You see, it's a little complicated, but Walt Disney actually had to testify before Congress at the McCarthy hearings because back then, a lot of individuals, especially in Hollywood, were accused of being communists. And it was easy to point the finger to say you're a communist and you had to defend yourself. And you had to point out others who might be potentially communists as well. So what did Walt do? The only reasonable thing at the time, he pointed his fingers at his strikers to be communists. Walt Disney is being bombarded by all of this negativity. And it's just not something he was accustomed to. The entire situation is a catastrophe. The next day, Disney skipped town for a 10-week working tour of South America and left the headaches to his brother and longtime business partner, Roy. So while Walt was vacationing in South America and his father just passed away, what happened to the strikers? Well, they all came to an agreement because Roy stepped in and saved the day. Yes, Roy came in and he pretty much gave the animators, the strikers, everything they wanted because he wanted them to get back to work. And it's definitely not the first time that Roy has financially bailed out the company. From the early days of the licensing agreement for Disney products, later on to actually creating the relationship with ABC to have the funding for Disneyland Park, and then coming out of retirement to help build Walt Disney World in 1971. Disney was still on the road in South America when his father Elias died unexpectedly. Walt declined to cut his trip short and return home for the funeral of the man with whom he had clashed much of his life. This was just fine with Roy. By the time Walt did finally return at the end of October, Roy had resolved the strike. The Disney art department was back on track. But the studio would never again feel like family to Walt. And there's a crazy plot twist to this. Walt almost became vindictive. He kept a secret list for those he felt who betrayed him. Take a look at this. The gal I married was a, a secretary in, in personnel. She was called up to Walt's office to help on the files. And she would go through and find people that were out on strike. And they were moved from here to this this file. Walt came in and said, how's it going? She just said, what are we doing this for? And he said, well, these are the people that are true to Disney. These are the people who at one time or one day will not be here. After the strike, Walt distrusted everybody. One of the great animators who worked on Snow White said, Walt Disney was a great man. Walt Disney was a genius. If you were his friend, he was a warm friend. If you crossed him, he was a mean SOB. The 1941 animator strike against Walt Disney was profound. It set the path for Walt to be separated from his animators and his employees to create what is now known as Disneyland Park. Walt, Lillian noted, was liquidating long-held family assets. Her husband sold their Palm Springs vacation home and borrowed $100,000 against his life insurance policy. He even sold rights to his own name to Walt Disney Productions. Then, he started an entirely new company for an entirely new enterprise. So hey, I'm LJ with today's Adventure Stop, here with our mini-documentary on the 1941 strike against Walt Disney. If you like today's mini documentary, give it a nice like and thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you on the next one.